And our objective is still on limit. Very well. So what we learned so far? We start talking about different types of functions. Then we start defining a new concept that we call the limit. Remember that for a function, y equals to f of x, the limit of the function as x approaches to a, if this guy exists and is equal to a fixed number like l, then l is that y value on y axis and we call it the limit of the function. But note that if we have two different numbers, the limit does not exist. L must be a unique number. Here we go. So let us start classifying functions. We have, sometimes we have nice functions. We are not worried about those two functions that are nice or combination of nice functions. We can easily calculate the limit of those nice functions. Later on, you're going to see we have crazy looking functions. And to find the limit of those types of functions, we have to come up with some techniques or other ideas. So let's classify functions. Classify functions to find the limit. Well, the very first type of functions that are nice functions are either constant, linear, quadratic, or in general, polynomial functions. So let's talk about constant functions. Remember that constant function is defined as f of x equals to a constant number, f of x equals to two, f of x equal to zero, f of x is equal to a half, square root of two, negative a third, those are constant functions. No matter what x is, your y is always fixed and it is equal to this number like k. The limit of constant function f of x as x approaches to any number, it doesn't matter what that is, is always k. Always k, your y value is always fixed. My y value, no matter what x is, is k. So the limit is equal to k. Give us an example. For example, if you have f of x equals to three, then the limit of f of x, x approaches to any number. It doesn't matter what number we're talking about. It's always three. That's functions. Two, linear functions. Like what? f of x is equal to mx plus b. These are examples of nice functions. What's the meaning of that? It means that if you want to find the limit of these types of functions, you just substitute, direct substitution. Limit of f of x as x approaches to a, whatever that number is, is equal to m a plus b. Direct substitution. Direct substitution. Will I ever see limit? Yes. When you're taking Math 1D, multivariable calculus, you're going to see the limit of multivariable functions. 
you're going to use the techniques that you're going to learn in this class to evaluate the limit of those functions. So for example, suppose I have f of x equals to 2x plus 1. The limit of f of x as x approaches to, let's say, 1 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 1, which is 3. Linear functions. Next, nice function is quadratic function. Three quadratic functions. F of x is equal to a x squared plus b x plus c. And to find the limit, we're going to use direct substitution. Right, substitution, it means that if I want to find the limit of ax squared plus bx plus c as x approaches to any number, let us call that number, let's see, like um, m, maybe, then this guy is equal to am squared plus bm plus c. Direct substitution. So as you can see here, we see a pattern. All of these functions, they are examples of polynomial functions. So in general, if we have polynomials, f of x equals to a n, x to the n, a n minus 1, x to n minus 1, dot, 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 a1x plus a sub 0. To find the limit, we use direct substitution. Substitution. So we're done with nice functions. Eventually, we're going to go over a lot of examples. But let us finish classifying these types of functions. Okay. Well, now I expect you to ask, what if we don't have a function like this? What if we have a rational function, radical function? Oh, my God. Uh, square root function. Different types of functions involved in, you know, one term or a quantity that you're defining for your function. What do we do then? Well, okay, luckily for us, we have techniques to simplify those functions and try to find the limit. It takes a little bit of more time, but eventually we are able to solve it. That's the only goal that we have in math, to find the solution, to find the right technique to solve the problem. Very well. So I'm going to start by giving you the classification for ugly functions. Functions to find limit. Not nice functions. Okay, for not nice functions, the very first one that you're going to deal with is rational functions. rational functions, like f of x equals to px divided by qx. Always remember that when you have ugly functions, not nice functions, automatically you have to do the substitution. Sometimes in parallel words, you might be lucky that limit might exist, and you don't have to, you know, apply any technique. So I'm going to write down step one and then step two. Step one, direct 
substitution. If direct substitution doesn't work, you move to the second step. Step two. Use factorization to factor the numerator, to factor the denominator, and simplify. If you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity, use factorization of the numerator and the denominator. Then Finally, use direct substitution. Very well. Use example, what are you talking about? Well, let us take a look at this example together. Question says, example, find the limit of three plus x squared minus nine divided by x as x approaches zero. Okay, very well. I have a rational function. I have a quantity on the numerator. I have a quantity on the denominator. Well, step one tells me use direct substitution. Direct substitution says, okay, I have three plus zero squared minus nine divided by zero, which is nine minus nine over zero or zero over zero. When you have zero over zero, it means that you have indeterminate form. Indeterminate form. So this is my step one. My step one didn't work. It doesn't give me anything useful. It doesn't give me a fixed number or it doesn't give me just one infinity. What should I do? I have to move on to step two, use factorization, expansion, the methods that I learned before in algebra to try to simplify this expression on the numerator. I'm not really worried about the denominator because it only has x in it. So on my numerator, I get nine plus six x plus x squared minus nine divided by x as x approaches zero. Remember from intermediate algebra, you learn that if you have a plus b squared, this is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So here you have, uh, let's see, 3 plus x squared, which is going to be 9 plus 3 times 2, 6x plus x squared. Well, let's take a look at this fraction. On the numerator, I have nine and the negative nine. They're opposite of each other. What's left? I have the limit of six x plus x squared. I'm going to factor out x. I left with six plus x divided by x as x approaches zero. Again, I can get rid of the common factors, x and x. What's left? The limit of six 
plus x as x approaches zero, which is just a linear expression. Direct substitution gives me limit equals to six. This is the limit. the limit of this function as x approaches zero. Okay, well, the second function that is not nice is going to be rational, but involving radicals. So I'm going to write two here. radical either on the numerator or on the denominator, rational functions having radicals. Very well. So what is our approach here? Our approach is first direct substitution. If you have zero over zero, infinity over infinity, instead of using factorization or expansion or um, those methods that we learned in intermediate algebra, we're going to use rationalization. We multiply the numerator and the denominator, or just in general, we rationalize either the numerator or the denominator. rationalize the numerator or the denominator, then simplify. And finally, we use direct substitution. Very well. Give us an example. Okay, here we go. One example for you it says find the limit of square root of x squared plus nine minus three divided by x squared as x approaches zero. Very well. So let us follow the steps. Step one, direct substitution. Okay. Let's check step one. Sometimes they get lucky. Sometimes direct substitution gives us one unique number and you're done. If I plug in zero here, I get square root of zero plus nine minus three divided by zero squared, which is zero. So we get three minus three over zero or zero over zero, which is in the term as well. Okay, so now we have to move on to the second step. We have to resolve this issue. So we're going to rationalize either the numerator or the denominator. Remember that to find the conjugate, conjugate component, we're taking the quantity, whatever it is, and we just change the sign. So let me write this way down here for you, for those of you who forgot about the rationalization and the conjugate, the conjugate. The conjugate of square root of A plus square root of B, is square root of a minus square root of b and the conjugate of square root of a minus square root of b is square root of a plus square root of b. So the only difference between a, uh, a term and a conjugate is the difference between the sign between them. So now I'm going to take the conjugate of the quantity on the numerator 
and then rationalize the whole thing. So step two. Here we go. You have the limits. We're going to copy down the whole thing, whatever it is. X squared plus nine minus three divided by X squared as X approaches zero. Now I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the numerator. So here I have square root of X squared plus nine plus three divided by square root of x squared plus nine plus three. You're getting back to intermediate algebra. So on the numerator, these two are the same terms with opposite operation. So you have a minus b times a plus b is going to be a squared minus b squared. So we get x squared plus nine minus nine divided by, here we have the limit, don't forget the limit, we're finding the limit, and we have on the denominator x squared times this quantity, let's put this one inside the radical, plus three as x approaches zero. So simplify, okay, to simplify, we have nine, minus nine, which is zero. We get the limit, limit of x squared divided by x squared times x squared plus nine plus three as x approaches zero. We have x squared on the numerator, x squared on the denominator, just cancel it out. Here we go. Then we cancel these two out. What's left on the numerator? one is left on the numerator. So this is the limit of one divided by square root of x squared plus nine plus three as x approaches zero. Direct substitution, one divided by square root of nine plus three or one over six. This is the limit. 